This now from one, the escalation between Turkey and Syria is hard and lang. He's the vice president for programs and policy at Refugees International. Hardin, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's good to be here. Thank you. Russia has denied any involvement, but has been lending Syria air support for years now. What does Russia have to gain? Well, I mean, to begin with, Russia denying involvement of this uh, is, it's almost laughable. I mean, the entire nature of the offensive that's being undertaken right now with the advance of uh, the Syrian army on the ground is happening under the cover of uh, Russian uh, warplanes. Uh, and it's the bombing campaign in particular that is brutalizing the civilian population to the extent that we're seeing in your video clips. Um, the civilian targets have been hit repeatedly and on purpose. Um, by Russian forces, including schools and clinics, et cetera. So they're a, a quite a large part of why we see what is, in essence, you know, the, the, the most dire humanitarian chapter of the Syrian war unfolding before our eyes. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said the U.S. has no plans to reengage in Syria's civil war after, of course, pulling out troops last year. What does that decision continue to mean? Well, for one thing, it means that the United States doesn't have the level of diplomatic leverage that it could at the table today. Um, when the United States was uh, present in a significant level in northeast Syria, it had uh, greater political leverage at the table with respect to the final political solution in Syria moving forward. Uh, with the withdrawal of those troops and then the reinsertion of a smaller number, uh, it means that leverage is no longer really there. So, I mean, the, the big thing that we're seeing, it's, it's quite extraordinary that the political process that's surrounding uh, you know, the attempts to reach a ceasefire, you know, involving Russia and Turkey, they are the main uh, drivers of that conversation, and rightly so. However, it, it's quite uh, extraordinary to note that the United States is not playing a significant overt diplomatic role. I mean, I have no doubt that U.S. diplomats are working quite hard behind the scenes, but the fact is the United States really isn't there in a significant way, given the fact that we have a NATO country possibly coming into conflict with uh, Russia. You know, we're looking at these heartbreaking images. The fighting has forced nearly one million people out of the area, creating what the United Nations and you as well called a humanitarian crisis. Is there an end in sight here? Uh, it's hard to see one. I mean, because it's not as though this crisis was uh, unforetold. And there are a number of humanitarian um, uh, analysts and foreign policy analysts who have seen this chapter coming or this moment coming inside of Syria, inside of Idlib. And it follows very much a pattern that the regime uh, has rolled out over the last eight to nine years when trying to pacify a civilian population in an area. So uh, if we don't see a significant uh, move diplomatically or even put some militarily to stop this advance, it's hard to see how this stops. Um, there is, I think, if if we can't achieve a ceasefire, which is the number one concern, I mean, all parties involved in this should be pushing for a ceasefire. If that's not possible, uh, the thing that we'd be hoping for would be that Turkey would be able to open the border and allow some of these, you know, hundreds of thousands across uh, and seek, seek shelter on their side of the border. If that fails, in essence, what you have is a, uh, a kill box that's becoming increasingly tight as the Syrian forces move up the land and the Russian airplanes overhead up towards the Turkish border along the wall uh, with um, literally no place to go. All right. Thank you so much, Vice President for Programs and Policy at Refugees, Harding Lang. Thank you. We really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Still to come here on Clear Cut.